everyone. To these aren't the nerds you're looking for. Kevin Horde here. Lorenzo Fon here. What's up, buddy? Not much, man. Continuing on here with the Clone Wars. Seems like we have our conclusion to a Citadel trilogy. Yeah. I would hope so. Uh, seeing <laughs> as the way this thing turns out. So this yes. is uh, part three of three, it seems. Indeed, yeah. Uh, this is Citadel Rescue, which is... Season 3, episode 20 of The Clone Wars, yeah? Yep. Is that what we're going to be talking about? It is. Production uh, 317, original release date is uh, March 11th, 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, solid into 20 BBY. Uh, we've got the same writer on this one, which is Matt Michnovich. Uh -huh. Michnovitz. Uh, yeah. Director Stuart Lee. So Stuart Lee kind of sandwiched the first part, third part of this thing. Uh, with Brian Callan O'Connell. Nope, I'm totally wrong. What? Doesn't know. matter. <laughs> Carry on. Yep. What's the fortune cookie for this one? Fortune cookie. Without honor, victory is hollow. Uh, got some insight on this one? Yeah, this one's definitely Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan it is, all the yeah. way. Like, no question. He nearly uh, says this at the end of the episode. Pretty much, yeah. As soon as the episode ended. Like, I had a feeling it would be Obi-Wan, and then right at the end of the episode, I'm like, yep, it's Obi-Wan. Yeah, I mean, this it's pretty much a paraphrase of one of his closing lines, so. Yep. So, easy as that. Uh, the newsreel for this one, also easy. Basically a recap of the last two episodes, which would be uh, The Citadel and Counterattack. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Let me just lead right into this one. Yeah. yeah, my note on the newsreel is that these are definitely feeling like more dramatic and um, more like a TV narrator rather than like a proper newsreel. That, that it definitely had like a more of like a news report feeling in the beginning of this mm -hmm. of this series, and at least for the last handful of episodes, it's definitely felt more uh, like the narrator of a TV show. So, interesting, yeah. That's that's all I got on that. <laughs> so basically, we just start shortly after uh, our team leave the caves, mm -hmm. right from the end of counterattack. Yeah, aren't they still in the caves? My first note is uh, we got our crew in some lava mines, right? So yeah, it's it pretty much just picks up right where the last episode leaves off. Uh, they're discussing their plan of what they need to do. Uh, somebody's like, oh, we should probably call the council. And Evan's like, dude, I'll take care of it. Uh, he uses R2 to call Mace Windu. And then mm -hmm. uh, Mace basically tells them that Plo is on the way. Yoda pops in also and uh, tells them where the rendezvous point is, which is like, yep. seems like the smallest island in this, uh, in some volcano like right in the middle it does not look like an easy spot to get to yeah it's right in a lava lake mm -hmm. and i and it's also the lava lake is also inside of a mountain that's inside of like another lava lake something like that yeah, yeah. so it's a little patch of land surrounded by lava surrounded by a mountain which itself is surrounded by more lava right is that the direction we're headed out yes yep so it's like five donuts within each other and then a donut hole. Uh, side note, mm -hmm. I think I saw on like a YouTube video or something, uh, but there is like, there is actually a location that is like the largest island on a lake, on an island, on a lake, on an island. It's like this weird thing. It, there is one in, it, I believe it's in Lake Superior. Yeah. Okay. There's an island within a lake which itself is in another island uh -huh. which is is in itself i think in lake superior i don't know how many steps it goes but yeah that that's a that's a very real thing i've it, heard of it this. goes a I bunch i can't remember what it's called and this is basically where they need to be right except instead of like safe fresh water there's lava yeah which seems super uh super unobtainable to get there both for the rescuers and the rescuees. Also, what I don't understand is the start of the Citadel explained that the problem with the Citadel is that they had very little intel on both the 
fortress and the planet. And then and by the time we get to this one, they're like, oh, nope, we've done a full scan since you guys were there. Go to this island. This is the place to be. Okay, counter argument to that. Maybe this mm-hmm. is like one of the only locations that they knew exactly where it was. So they're like, eh, well, go there. Like, we know where that's at. We know how to get there. Um, I guess. And also, uh, I don't think it was explained in any of these episodes, but the reason that they don't have any intel on or all their intel is outdated, right? It's mm-hmm. because the Citadel was built in, like, 522 BBY. So this thing's, like, over 500 years old. And... Mm-hmm. Um, I guess, like, all of the info and the plans at that point were kind of safeguarded because um, it was a way for... It wasn't even the old Republic, right? It was just, like, Mm -hmm. the early Republic, maybe? I don't know how that works because I think the old Republic's, like, Like multi-thousand years years old. Um, Yeah. But it was built for... to defend against rogue Jedi. So I don't know if this thing just went into disrepair and... Uh, the Jedi were on the up and up and everything was cool. And then for some reason, the Separatists came in, took over it. Um, but really, that's neither here nor there. Um, right. I was going to say all the same. It's it's still weird to me that somehow over the course of, say, 500 years, that an island in the middle of a lava flow would be consistent. Fair right? enough. My argument is not valid. <laughs> like... It's a natural. It'd be one thing if it was like in the middle of like a continent, but still over the course of 500 years, there's going to be some changes, right? Now, is it possible that this is a location that our uh, team of good guys could have seen from afar? So they like relayed that GPS information back to Mace Windu? Uh, that, or is Yoda just, just being a dick? That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't understand at what point they would be scanning the landscape, right? Right. Like, that's a very, very, very side mission on top of, like, the normally dangerous mission they already had. Like, this mission was so dangerous that they didn't want Ahsoka to come. Right. But at what point are they like, well, while you guys are doing that, I'm going to go scan the topography of this whole place here. Hang on, guys. It's possible. I mean. So, yeah, no. Because, like, for that to be true, that just... For that to be true, I would just think less of everything that happened in the last three episodes. I'm going to go with uh, Yoda's just being a dick because yeah. the way that he closes this conversation out is not only go to the really hard fucking place to get to in the middle of the lava lake, uh, but then he's also he also basically says, uh, you know, you better hurry because we got one shot at this. So they're going to swoop in if you're not there. You know, too bad. Yeah. It's like one shot and like the window of opportunity, I think is what he refers to it as, right? right? There's like a small chance. There's a small perfect time for them to get out. Yoda-sized it is. Right, yeah. Um, Then we cut back to O.C. Sobek, right? Commander Sobek? Uh, It's possible. I think uh, some commandos show up and then uh, the Jedi just kind of... Oh, the clones take him out and the Jedi... it's, It's so funny because... Uh, the clones that are with them take out these commandos. They do a pretty good job, and mm-hmm. it kind of pans over, and the Jedi are just all standing there, like, frozen with their lightsabers ignited, like they got right. caught with their pants down or something. Um, <laughs> but then, yeah, we do get a real nice establishing shot of the Citadel, and we pan down to OC. Uh, he's on a call with Dooku. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dooku, at this point, re-explains why they need to find the prisoners. Um does Dooku know who the prisoner is, and does Dooku know that uh, Obi Wan and Anakin are there also? Because he just refers to them as the prisoners. He doesn't refer to them as like that's a, the missing Jedi or anything like that. That's a good question. I don't think he does. I don't think he also cares. Okay. Right. He's pretty straightforward with Sobek here. Um, basically calling Sobek out on his failure to on, on losing the Jedi mm-hmm. and not recapturing them in any short amount of time. Mm-hmm. Um, Sobek definitely has like a semi-permanent eye twitch. Was this a thing that happened in previous episodes or is this in this one? I will say that I didn't his notice it here. Is, so it's very possible that I didn't notice it the last two weeks either. Possible. Yeah. 
I I don't recall, but we did record the previous episodes a short while ago. But um, yeah, I just I just found that funny because it's just one eye. It's a very big twitch too. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like the bottom lid just keeps flapping up and down sort of thing. I feel like I remember uh, seeing some behind the scenes stuff where Dave Filoni talked about that. So I think it was uh, an active choice. Obviously, I mean it's right. animated, so it has Animation, to be. Animation, yeah. But. Um, it that would lead me to believe that it was there before, and potentially mm-hmm. maybe the more stressed out he gets, the worse it gets. Right. So when he's kind of feeling in control, uh, that doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. So. No, I, it's a detail I really, <laughs> really liked for sure. So, it 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 was kind of funny too. I just there's something about the way he's animated. <laughs> When he's just trying to keep his cool, but his eye just starts twitching, and it's just—it's always his left eye. It seems like. Yeah. Hey. Um, fair enough, man. Yeah. That's a nice little detail. It. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we need to get more into this Nexus route coordinate conundrum. No. Uh, no. Nope. It seems dumb, to me. Yeah. So what does Sobek do next? Like, what actively happens next here? Uh, well, he gets threatened by Dooku. Then we we cut back over to. Um, our Jedi pals they're on the run you know by some lava ridge we get more droids um, their plan at this point I guess they need to like rappel down some cliff or some shit and Anakin's mm-hmm. like yo R2 tell your, tell your droid buddies to uh, stay behind and defend us and uh, there's kind of a, a nice little sweet scene of like R2 giving some commands and like the the commander droid that was reprogrammed is like, hey sir, it was nice it was nice serving you and mm. uh, you know, they know it's a suicide mission. Um, we get a cable repel, R2 just just uh floats on down floats with his... on down. Um, yeah. one of the cables gets shot out and mm-hmm. Two troopers just straight drop down to their death. What surprised yep. me about this is that when they get to the bottom, not only are they still there, but then there's like another fight with more commandos and more firing. And uh, I think it's Rex. Rex or Fives just straight like takes this dead troopers blaster. Yep. And they just carry Walks on. Yep. Um, it's a it's a bit of a darker moment. It's. I think this show is kind of the ma- the maturity of this show that um, you know it's not a blink three times and they're gone because in the past like if something you know if a trooper died or something they were just kind of like off screen and gone and that was it right. and that's not the case here like um, this guy that unfortunately lost his life um, his weapon comes into play later. Yeah, and he's just and his body's on full display, yep. and left it's for still the buzzards. Interesting though, when they get to the bottom, though, his body is like one of the bodies is partially obscured by a rock, which I found interesting. Like I don't know why mm-hmm. that was necessary when like there's a second shot that just shows body full in view. Right. I just thought that was kind of odd, honestly. Yeah, it's like instead of of just showing that these this uh, this I think it's a a clone trooper and then like a clone officer i think is what it Mm -hmm. is and instead of just you know they fall and that's it like there's definitely a shot like nope these guys are dead right and i'm gonna correct myself it was cody that picked up the right but what i'm saying is it's weird that there's one shot first that obscures it as if they were like well we're not gonna show the body and they walk past it and then there's a shot change where cody picks up the weapon Mm -hmm. but then body is full in view and i'm just like Oh, so we are showing it. Not that there's anything violent to show. I mean, they fell to their deaths. They're in armor. It's essentially right. just armored bodies on the ground. Right. It was just a weird choice in the, sh- the first shot. Because at first I didn't notice it. I just saw a couple of legs like behind some rocks. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, the body is there. Right. Like, it took me a second to notice it. So it was just like a weird... It's just a weird geography problem when it changes shots and then like it the whatever the rock obstruction was there before doesn't appear to quite be there. Right. In in the secondary shot, so it's just a little thing like that. Like there there's a weird 
cheat in geography that happens, at least from the one viewing I had of it. So, Either they just moved the set piece out of the way, or mm-hmm. uh, the the POV, POV shot is just from you know a different angle, perhaps. Yeah, it's just in the first shot. Like you, there's definitely like that rock looks close to where they're walking, right? And it's a tall rock. Okay, you know? it's tall enough that it's obscuring an entire body minus legs. And then we when we cut to the side, it's like, it's like uh, if let's say like a body fell on the sidewalk of a road, right? Mm-hmm. First shot is like. You're standing in the dash lines between two lanes mm-hmm. of the street. Yep. And the body is at the curb of the sidewalk. And then when you change shot, that body is dead center of the sidewalk. I gotcha. Yeah. You know? So that's that's what I saw. And the the reason I bring it up is because it, like it it did it it, there, it was a weird choice because at first I was like, oh, they're not going to show the body, and that's fine. Like impl- implied violence is fine because it is still a kid's show mm-hmm. i understand that and then we switch shots and it's just like oh no we're just showing this fucking thing anyways you know right so it's just weird that they went through the effort of hiding it to begin with is what throws me off so i'm with you yeah anyway so they grab the, the gun move on they grab the gun it- they kind of run out of there we cut up to outer space uh, good guy Star Destroyers are here. Plo Koon seems to be in charge because he is delegating out the plan uh, to a couple other Jedi because every time that uh, you cut to a new group of people, they have to re-explain the plan, uh, mm-hmm. of course, per the show. But uh, he's got Jedi Master Tin and Jedi Master Galia with him. Uh, so it's Adi Galia. How do you say Master Tin's first name? Because it's spelled like S A E S E. Is it Say C? I've always said Say or yeah, Say C. Say C. Sassy. Say C. Say C. Yeah, I was kind of figuring this out too. Honestly, that, as soon as I saw that, I was like, I don't think I've actually seen that spelled out before today. <laughs> yeah, that one confuses me. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. That's one of those Master names Tin. I got from the That's toys. Yeah, it's they just call him Master Tin. That's Master who he is. Tin. Which is no help to us. <laughs> Not at all. Right. Um, Eddie Gali is Adi Gali is one of those characters that, like Eth Koth, we've probably talked about this before. That like the actress was changed or something. So then, mm-hmm. but they used like the same prosthetics. I don't know. So then, uh, because they looked different, then she was just given a different name, and the other Jedi was disappeared. And I don't remember. Which is so weird to me. Yeah. It's Stas Ali and Adi Gali, and I don't remember which came first, but mm-hmm. she's in this episode. Um, she basically says, you know, well, they better be there when we get there. And uh, Plo Koon's like, oh, yeah, they will. So anyway, we cut uh, we cut from there back down to O.C. Sobek. Um, and out of the blue, he's like, use the Anubas. But for tracking only, not for killing. And uh, these are like some wolf dog type creature things. Yeah. Why didn't they use? Why didn't he use these guys before? I have no idea. I was wondering the same thing. I was wondering where these guys came from. How they had the cages ready to go. Like there, there's no warning that the plan was going to use Anubas, but they're like, oh yeah, they're they're right here. We had we had these just sitting here on the dock, ready to go this whole time. So I looked up Anubas on Wikipedia, and mm-hmm. uh, here is their classification. Mammal. Great. That's it. <laughs> uh, it says Anubas were mammals that lived throughout the Outer Rim territories. And apparently Embo had one named Marok. That's it. That's yeah. all we get out of it. Yeah, they're pretty analogo- analogous to space dog wolves. Mm-hmm. Like, Nothing particularly special about these guys. Yeah, it's a bloodhound that looks um, more ridiculous. Yeah, definitely. That's it. So they're on the hunt. They uh, they run off. Uh, they they were in like cages. Yep. They just get let go. Yep. And they apparently know exactly what they're looking for. Yep. They didn't even have to like sniff a lightsaber or anything. Nope. Nope. Or get a direction. It. You know, like nope. sick Jedi or anything. They just. Out the cage and on the way. Yep. 
uh, yeah. Back over to the Jedi, Obi-Wan finds, like, an exit from their lava cave. I, th it's so weird, because they go from, like, like, all of this takes place outside. Yeah. But, as you said earlier, with, like, the cheating of geography, like, they go when there's... When there is a shot from across the street, across yeah. the lava street, they're on, like, a path, and it's only, like, six feet wide, and they're doing, like, this trek, and they're, you know, going uphill, and then it'll cut to them, and they're kind of, like, in a cave with not yeah. really stalactites and stalagmites, and uh, then there's, like, an opening, and Obi-Wan walks through, and then they're just, like, on the edge of, like... A lava lake, and it looks yeah. one way from inside. It's real. It's oddly designed. I'll just put it that way. Um, yes. This would not be a good planet for a geography lesson. Um, no. Maybe this is a good point to bring up. Like when you see, um, what is the name of this planet? Lola Sio Soya, Loya Soya, or something like that. Soya. Mm, anyway. Yeah. Uh, it's like two thirds of a planet. Yeah, it's like busted open on the bottom, right? At least bottom from our perspective, looking at it. So where the southern hemisphere would be mm -hmm. is just kind of like a glowing ball of magma, and right. um, there's definitely a lot of planetary debris in the outer space portion of of the planet. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like this planet would be able to hold together. I don't know what catastrophe caused this to happen. Right. And, and and how the lava is still able to flow and stay and right continue to... And there's still be an atmosphere and all, right. all kinds of other stuff. This is literally Star Wars space physics. Oh, yeah. And, it's the weirdest uh, one. It looks really cool, mm -hmm. but if you think about it for a half a second and you have any type of thought uh you're gonna go mm, doesn't really make sense oh yeah yeah we yeah it's, i'm kind of amazed we haven't talked about it yet but it's i would almost prefer that the citadel was like on uh one of these planetary asteroids not the planet itself yeah, definitely it's a weird setup for sure and that you know, at that point, then, uh, you know, you could say that there is no atmosphere, so it's like you can't actually leave the Citadel because you'll die, and mm -hmm. uh, there could be other types of perils, uh, with, even if, you know, you had a spacesuit or something, like you're in this, in this um, planetary asteroid belt, and there could be, like... I don't know, lava flares that are akin to, like, sun flares and stuff like that, like other types of, of threat, but uh, instead of just kind of walking al along the edge of Mordor the entire time and dipping yeah. in and out of a cave, uh, that's that's my thought on that. So um, Again, because, yeah, they, they set up how dangerous this planet is, but it's I can't tell if it's dangerous because it's just uncharted to the Jedi or if it's... It doesn't appear on its own terribly dangerous other than the lava flow, but, I mean, they just avoid the lava, you know? And then maybe other than these Anubas chasing after them, there hasn't been, like, the wild threat of life on the planet or anything like that, right? Correct. Yeah, there, there doesn't seem to be any type of uh, native species. Maybe there were before whatever cataclysmic event happened to this thing. Um, yeah. But even, like, Wikipedia doesn't have any information on it. It's it's just, like, this is where, basically the info is, like, this planet this is, is where, where the Citadel is. Yeah, you go to the Citadel, <laughs> and it's, like, it's on this planet, and then you go to that page, and it's, like, this planet has the Citadel. The Citadel is on here, yep. And that's it. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I got nothing. I got nothing for this. Um, so if it wasn't enough that uh, you got a two third of a planet with a big uh, lava fireball and um, kind of caves and whatnot, we had to add another threat with these Anubos. Uh, I just call them noobs, like throughout the rest yeah. of my notes, because Basically. that's pretty much what they are. It's like the noobs to the party. Uh, so Obi Wan does get this exit, and I'm thinking this place has to be 
hot as fuck because they're literally walking along molten magma, like yeah. liquid magma. There's no sharks with laser beams, um, <laughs> but it's they got to be hot. That's all I'm I was sure. thinking. Is like these dudes oh, are I'm hot. Very sure. Yeah, but they don't seem to break be breaking a sweat whatsoever. Nope. Nothing. They're just kind of chilling. Uh. Meanwhile, by the way, we haven't mentioned this yet, but Tarkin has been like kind of complaining about the rescue, which is really fucking weird. He's definitely a douche. Oh, he's a complete douche. And we I think right before they descended down the the lines is when there would have been a Tarkin comment to which Ahsoka comments forward to Anakin and Obi-Wan, right? Oh, yeah. She says something like, he doesn't seem very thankful that we came here to save him. Yeah. And then, like, we get this weird comment back where, like, Anakin's like, right, but he's not wrong because, you know, we could be doing more because we are peacekeepers and not technically warriors. Yep. That's totally that's totally what happens next because um, it's a good point to bring up Tarkin and his attitude because... He's at this point questioning whether or not uh, the the pickup crew will be there. You know, like, oh, we're going to spend yes. all this time getting to this island. Like, is anybody actually going to be here to save us? And uh, Jedi Master Evan Peel, who was supposed to be, like, his commanding officer, like, he's the Jedi. This dude's a... Uh, what is Tarkin at this point? Commander? Captain. Ma- Captain Tarkin. Captain, maybe, yeah. Uh, Evan basically says, you know shut up and keep walking and you won't have to worry about it. Like as soon as we get there, you'll know everything's good. Like the more you complain, the longer it takes, like maybe we'll miss our window then, but uh, just do the thing. Let's just get there. Yeah. So So I don't, yeah, I don't understand Tarkin at all. This is where Ahsoka uh, is basically talking about how she doesn't like Tarkin. And then any and Ahsoka are discussing like, what's up Tarkin's butt essentially. Mm-hmm. And, uh, Anakin, Anakin like is sticking up for him. He recaps why Tarkin doesn't like the Jedi. Yeah. And Obi-Wan's comment is like, well, that's a strange, that's, Oh, he says that's a rather simple point of view. So, uh, we do get a whole bunch of Obi-Wan talking about essentially from a certain point of view type deals here. Um, yeah, but Obi Wan's totally right. Anakin, oh, completely. Anakin, I guess, is right in his interpretation of of like paraphrasing Tarkin. But Obi Wan's more correct in saying, like, you know, for the for the simple minded person, like, yes, that makes sense. Uh, do we need to recap his thoughts on the Jedi? Not really, but but fair enough. It's, the main thing is that to me it's <coughs> this is a very odd place to place this conversation more than you know like I think we've already tapped into what the content is like I don't think there's nothing else we could say about the content that right would add anything to our discussion right. per se but I just found this like a very odd place between action scenes and them just walking and talking but then the Anubas are on their trail. Yeah, like, we get the walk and talk about a character that is also walking with them. Right, like three feet behind them. It's a very odd choice. Yeah. So it, it was just, like, because of it, I'm not going to lie, like, just despite us sitting here talking about this conversation, like, it, it didn't resonate with me in any way just because it, it just felt like this weird, like, throwaway moment almost, right? I'm not so, going to lie. I yeah. think that happens a few times. Right. So after so then, after Obi-Wan's comment, uh, the Anubas definitely howl like some coyotes. Maybe that's what yeah. these things are. Or space coyotes. Space coyote, dog, wolf things. Yeah. Yes. There's a lot. Yeah. Yep. Because like, they're kind of like big and fluffy like a, a wolf. But they have like a, a longer snout like a coyote sort of I don't know it's I got nothing and then they have like a single tooth that like grows out the bottom jaw yeah up in front of their nostril area yeah it's a weird amalgamation of different dog like creatures moving on but we can't uh, talk about the Anubas anymore (laughs) 
Ahsoka and Evan hear it. They kind of cock their heads, whatever. We cut back out to space and we get this uh, nice, what would be, um, if this were a live action thing, like a, mm-hmm. a, a drone shot that like kind of comes down through all the ships and whatnot. And then we just cut straight back to the planet. Um, K2B4 is talking to O.C. Sobek. And um, K2 says all the reinforcements have arrived. Apparently now he is on a spaceship. And he is in command of the blockade. They're blockading their own planet. And O.C.'s like, you better not let me down. Like, you're in charge. So don't fuck it up. Is that what you got out of this? No, I just... Is K2 planet side? Because I totally saw him, like, in the bridge of a ship. And so he's in charge of Maybe. the space battle. Yeah, K2 might be, but not OC. Yeah, OC's not. OC's still planet yeah, okay, side. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, K2 might, yeah, K2 might be, yeah. K2's not. Yeah. Um, Cut back to our good guys. Annie and Tarkin are having, like, a walk and talk. And uh, Annie's like, oh, you know, it's not a good idea to disagree with Master Peel. Like, it's probably not good for your career either. And then uh, Tarkin's like, oh, I'm not worried about my career because I'm buddies with Palpatine. Anakin's like, yeah. dude, so am I. Name drops. Yep. Name drops. Just name dropping. Yep. yep. Full name drop. That's it. And then Obi-Wan's like, yo, everybody needs to focus. Like, here's what we need to do. The Anubu, uh, the Anubos, is that what they are? Anuba. Anubas. Yeah. They're closing in. Uh, we got more planning. We got staps coming in. Uh, the staps are the standard transport. I don't remember what it's called. I don't remember either. It's the flying Segway. Yep. Something. So everything's coming in on them. And they uh, basically have a small plan to have Tarkin run off with a bunch of clones. The Jedi will take care of everything else. Droids show up. They start fighting the droids, right? Mm-hmm. We and definitely have Anuba some dramatic music. Yep. Music starts pumping up. Uh, Ahsoka and Evan Peel are left on their own to fight off the Anubas, right? Yeah, Annie and Obi-Wan are fighting some Anubas. Then we get a droid attack. Then... Ahsoka and Evan are fighting droids, and then everyone is kind of fighting everyone. There's a whole bunch of fighting. Um, Annie is attacked by one of the noobs, takes him out. Tarkin gets shot, I think. I oh, no, he gets shot at, but a clone definitely jumps in front takes of him. Takes the shot, yeah. Takes the shot. Um this is when Ahsoka and Evan Peel are uh, kicking some crab droid ass. Um, and then, yeah, some Anubis come up and Evan is straight destroyed by one of these one of these Anubis. It's yep. kind of brutal. Gets fully mauled. Yep. Mm. So then it's just Peel alone with Ahsoka. Peel starts dying. Uh Ahsoka wants to get go get help. Peel is like, stop. I don't have time for this. Ahsoka's like, no, I'm going to go get help. Peel again says, stop. I'm fucking dying. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you what I know. Yep. Ahsoka's like, well, you should tell Obi-Wan or Anakin. Bitch, I'm dying. Mm-hmm. I will tell you this now or no one will fucking know. This scene annoyed me so fucking much. Um. I think I complained about her in the last few episodes, but Ahsoka in this episode also is just killing me right now. Um, I do like, like how you said that he starts dying. Yeah, he's he's in process. The, the The process has started, right? That computer is shutting down, and there's no reversing that engine. Um, I'm mixing metaphors now. Uh, That's all right. But yeah, like Ahsoka invited herself on this fucking mission. And even Evan Peel says something to this effect where it's like, look, I don't... She's like, I'm not even supposed to be here today. Like, full fucking clerks situation, right? Yep. Um, And he's like, yeah, well, it totally doesn't matter. Yeah, she totally that she lied. Right. And he's like, I don't care. You're here now. Let me tell you this information before it gets fucking lost. 
Mm-hmm. She's like, "Well, I'll 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 be quick. I'll I'll run off and come back." It's like, "No, stop." The Ahsoka, just take that fucking information and go. Like, yeah, he's like, it doesn't, do it doesn't matter if you lied to get here. The important part is that you're here, and now you're the most important part. If you would just shut right. up and let me tell you, you're the one here. So let me do this. Like, like she spent like the last two episodes, like, or especially that first episode where she's like, "Look, see, I am useful. Maybe there is a reason I'm here because I can fit through small doors." Um, and then this episode, she goes into no, 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 uh, wrong, no, uh, I, no, I, I, I don't, I'm not the manager, no, 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 like, like what, like shut up, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't like her, I don't like it, super fucking annoying. I would totally anyways, ask you if you thought that this was supposed to be a metaphor for her realizing that uh, she wasn't like this is why she wasn't supposed to be here, or she wasn't invited to begin with. But I don't think that you care, so we'll just we'll move We'll talk forward. more about that, right? Something else happens at the end with Ahsoka, regarding okay. Ahsoka, that then destroys even more so how I feel about this moment. Like, that's a very good question to bring up. Okay. Because I did think about that. I was like, okay, maybe this is, like, the moment where she realizes she was, like, in too deep. Like, you know. This is where it should be, anyway. Yeah, this is where it should be. Like, this is the moment where she goes, like, oh, I'm not, like, I, I made a mistake. I thought I was too powerful but i realize i'm still learning whatever right some plain cliched message could have applied here and i would have been okay with it instead we just get her complaining Mm -hmm. fucking shit up in the end though evan peel does get her information makes her promise that she can only give it to the jedi council which is weird um we'll get to that yes Uh, we have an arbitrary like cut back to uh, osi sobek for like 14 frames and then we cut back to the Jedi again uh, yeah. they're out of peril um, I guess all of the space coyote dog wolves are either dead or not on the trail or just out of frame or something everything's yeah, kind of calm right now um, Obi-Wan looks up and he's like oh no because uh, because Ahsoka is bringing Master Peel's body back and yep. um Anakin is basically like, dude, did you get the info or what? <laughs> Which I, you know, honestly, that's the most logical line of thinking in this entire episode so far. <laughs> it totally is, but my note was like very cold, very cold, Anakin. Like she hasn't even, she barely puts his body down and is like, he's dead. And Anakin's like, did you get the info? Mission first, bitch. So, mission first. Yeah, totally mission first. Uh, so Obi-Wan throws, uh, a nice little ad hoc funeral and he's like, uh, everybody thinks something nice. Like, I'm not even going to say something nice, but, uh, Evan Peel like did his thing and, um, you know, did the Jedi duty. Uh, let's just force levitate him into the lava. Yep. Which because Obi-Wan also says something like we do have to proceed with our mission, which is what Evan Peel would want because right. also like, again, this is a very nice moment. This little memorial right here. I will make a note. The music is very good. But they're still being chased. Like, Here's my note about it. Yeah. Okay, this is fine. Like, a uh, funeral by fire, right? Yeah. They levitate him into lava, like a lava river. And then there is a fucking lava waterfall. Waterfall. I guess yep. a lava fall. And you yep. see Jedi Master Peel's... Uh, like canvas wrapped, wrapped body, like going yeah. over the edge. Yeah, I, everybody else that falls into the lava, which we've seen like a few droids and stuff fall into, they go in and like they're incinerated, get submerged. Yeah, incinerated and submerged, like full blown Terminator Two status, right? Like T eight hundred goes down, thumbs up, fire flames and down, right? Mm-hmm. But not. Evan Peel, for some reason, his canvas wrap body floats above all of it, and maybe he faked goes his over. death, and oh. he is himself levitating to just get away from all these people. <laughs> He's Possibly. like, "I'm finally done with Tarkin." Yeah. Uh, I told that little Togruta girl my info, and uh, I'm free. Yeah, it's a good moment, but again, uh, in the back of my mind, I'm like, they're still being chased, like the. They got to go. They got to get out of there. <laughs> they do. 
And, and luck- they eventually do, yeah. Luckily, all of our uh, good guy Star Destroyers have showed up. We do have a super dramatic like ship deployment um, with all kinds of stuff coming out of coming out of these things. Master Ten, um, what is he says? There have There's not a moment been, where he says, yeah, go ahead. He says, there have not been battles like this since the days of the Old Republic. I do not understand this quote. I made a note about this quote because this has been an ongoing war. Right. Plo Koon this says, battle, yeah. indeed, happy hunting. And my next note is, what the fuck? In all capital <laughs> letters, over like a half a page, because, as you just stated, this is the Clone Wars. We're, yes. what, 69 episodes into this thing? 68, yeah. Either way, we're in season three towards the end of season three. Right, so we're... Which takes place after the second movie of a trilogy. Right. What the actual fuck is this line? Right. I want to know who is responsible for this line. Like, is it the one credited writer, Matt? Or is it like somebody else on the fucking team? Because this I'm I this have, line distracted me so badly because it's so stupid. This is felony baloney. Like I don't. Even if this line occurred in Attack of the Clones, it's not a great line. Honestly, it's just awkward. The happy hunting thing. So if it wasn't for the yeah. happy hunting thing, like. Uh, when Tin says there have not been battles like this since the days of the Old Republic, like that in isolation, I think is a good line. But it does not if deserve to be placed. a year and a half into the Clone Wars. Right. Like, oh, yeah. D- d- what has he been doing for the past year and a half? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Like, has he just been like chilling been? with Jacasa New in the library? But they, that can't even be right because there's been shit going down in the fucking library. Right. I don't understand. Like, it just made me really pissed at Master Tin really badly. Like, I didn't understand where Tin was coming from here. That's, that's, because that's what I got on that. Like, I 100% agree. Yeah. Fucking uh, stupid line. My next note. Is uh, we pan into this stupid island and our heroes. Yeah, and the way they get on the island is really weird too. So they grapple across the. Yeah, so it's slacklining. A little bit different than grappling. Um, But that's just a well, actually. Um, I thought that was cool. Like, that is the way that they would have to get over there. Right, yeah. Um, So that's cool. Uh,. My next note at this point is that there's still seven minutes left of this episode. So yeah, I everybody I agreed. Everybody kind of takes their time getting across. There is a we we intercut there's back and forth between heroes and space at this point. Um, yeah, this space battle is to me 100 percent inconsequential. Yep. yep. There's didn't care. Nope. Didn't care at all. Didn't care. It's didn't not, need it. Nope. We can Especially with Master Tin's line, that just made me care even less about them. Uh, back on the island, basically, we just get droids showing up, more staps, right? Yep, more staps. Lots of staps. And uh, O.C. Sobek shows up himself on a stap, mm-hmm. and he is way oversized to be on one of these things. Yeah. Um, but then there's we have our normal fighting, and um, staps are stolen by Jedi, and and people are shot at, and droids, droids, droids. Um, O.C. Sobek gets shot down by fives. Uh, mm-hmm. So in retaliation, what he does is he runs over to Tarkin and picks him up, and he's gonna throw him in the lava, and he's like, the it's like the if I can't have that boyfriend, no one can. Except for right. it's if I can't have that info, no one can. Uh, he didn't even ask him though. He just like got shot down, runs over, picks him up, and threatens to throw him in the lava. Like, yeah. This is the exact opposite of what Dooku wanted. Dooku's like, yeah. "Fucking get them, yeah, get, get them the alive. info, yeah. If you can't get the info, then kill them, yeah." But he's like, even then, like the Anubas were mad. only meant, yeah, the Anubas were only meant to track even at that point, and then nope. Now we're way, way beyond any of that. I guess uh, I guess he forgot. Right. 
Um, at some point, I don't know if I'm skipping ahead a bit here, but Tarkin does get a hold of a, a rifle of some sort. Uh-huh. Shoots at Sobek uh-huh. from like three feet away yep. and completely fucking misses. And then Ahsoka stabs him in the back. Right. But Tarkin is a fucking captain of what if he can't shoot a fucking gun from three feet away? He's a captain of flat top haircuts and uh, bitching about the Jedi. <sighs> like, I don't like I'm not going to lie at this point. We can talk about it a little bit. These three episodes with Tarkin have just made me totally misunderstand Tarkin even more, maybe. Like, I, I respected Tarkin as, like, a higher-up sort of guy. Is this the introduction to his character in The Clone Wars? Yes. Yeah, This these uh, the Citadel is his first appearance in The Clone Wars. So this would be the introduction to his character, period, in the Star Wars canon. I think... I think there's a few other references to him before, but I could be wrong about that. Okay. Um, but all the same, these this arc here uh-huh. definitely kind of. I don't see how he would move up the ranks based on what we've seen here. Does that make sense? It does. I don't even know how he. I don't even know how he's made captain at this point, right? Uh huh. Um. So yeah, looking, it looks like he does show up in. Battlefront 2, but uh, I don't know why that's being placed beforehand here. Yeah, I guess so. I hadn't thought of things outside of the outside of motion Wars. picture. Yeah, so there there are other places he might show up, but um, yeah, because even Catalyst, the book places it as being before Clone Wars, mm-hmm. so I wonder if there's a lot of flashbacks or something regarding Tarkin there. Um, I have not read Catalyst yet, so I have not either. I I own it. I have it. It's sitting there on my shelf. I can physically see it with my own eyes right now. <laughs> you are one step just, ahead of me. But just sitting uh, there. Let's wrap. But yeah, this. I don't. Yeah, I just don't understand Darkin. Anyways, that's the end of that. So let's wrap Sobek this is thing gone. up. So we get a whole Good shit ton rescued. of crab droids that are like swarming this um this How island. How did they get on this island? They crawl Where up they out of the from? lava. Maybe they're lava fleas. I don't How? know. Anyways, moving on. Um, rescued by lats. Yep. Um, they end back up on Coruscant. Yeah. Let's just the, skip there. The one. Well, I have one note in between there. Go for it. And that's that. Uh, Plo. After Plo picks them all up, he ordered. He basically orders a retreat. A retreat. He's like, we got everybody. Let's go. He talks to a guy named Admiral Coburn. This guy is not. I don't know. It's so weird because most of most of the officers are clones. Mm-hmm. Then you have like the oddball like Tarkin, but then you have this other guy, Admiral Coburn. Um, and he looks all plastic and weird. Like even if this was live action, he would look like a weird plasticky Gary Sinise type guy. Okay. Um but his voice was like super similar to the rest of the clones and I was like is that D Bradley Baker? Like is this just like a a clone that had some plastic surgery? Like I didn't know mm. what was going on. And it was odd that like this guy's named, so I feel like he's going to come up later. We'll have to look out for I don't know. Admiral yeah. Coburn. We'll see. But yeah, we do end up back on Coruscant and um, basically Tarkin only wants to tell Palpatine his half of the plans. Ahsoka says he's only going to tell the council. Yoda's like, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to go talk to Palpatine and let him decide. Yeah, we'll figure it out from there, which I think is foolish. This Oh, it's uh, totally foolish. This means that yeah. Palpatine gets both, both halves of the info and then right. so does Dooku. Um, obviously yeah. Yoda won't know this, but I guess he's just deferring to Palpatine because Palpatine's the chancellor. I guess, but it's still just a weird path to take without vetting the information. Or... Yeah. I kind of feel like Yoda should have been like, okay, Tarkin, go ahead. Like, we're not going to yeah. give up our info, but immediately Yoda seems to, to be like, well, I'll go see if Palpatine needs our half also. 
Yeah, and it, it this only bothers me because it's coming from Yoda, who's supposed to be like one of the most powerful Jedi in the galaxy, but he's just like, yeah, sure. This sounds like a good plan. Right. Let's just do it. I'm like, uh, Yoda, you you sure about that? Um, like, yeah, uh, whatever. I uh, am. Then we in get another total agreement with you. Yeah, we get another little conversation between Skywalker and Plo Koon. Yeah, Anakin. Obi-Wan. Anakin yeah. straight up asked Plo, "Hey, did you did you assign Ahsoka to this mission?" And uh, Obi Wan's kind of got like a like a yeesh look on his face. Mm-hmm. And uh, Plo Koon says, apparently I did. And this is good enough for Anakin? Yeah, this also pisses me off. My note is Plo Koon is annoying. Like, that's what I how I reacted to this. Okay. It wasn't, like, anger. It was just more of, like, full annoyance. So, I don't... It's like... It relieves Ahsoka of the wrongdoing of lying which she completely did and slightly admitted to with evan peel right <coughs> and then uh, by plo coon like uh aiding her along in her bullshittery like just makes her worse to me right somehow right like she's getting away with lying to her master and she's being supported by other Jedi in lying to her master. I feel like Obi-Wan is probably pretty smug right now because he's like, oh, this is totally correct from a certain point of view. I guess. I don't I don't even know if that's happening. I really just think he's just like standing in the background like I, I got nothing. Because like Obi-Wan's also just picking up little pieces here and there. But like I, at the end of all of this, it's really just that I... Uh, it annoys me that Ahsoka lies, and then the moral of the story is cool beans. Right? Like, if a seven-year-old is watching this, it's like, oh, yeah. If you have a higher authority, like a boss or a teacher, and they tell you, hey, don't do that, and you go, no. As I'm long as somebody else covers for you, it's okay. Right. I did that because the janitor told me that was okay. And then the teacher is like, no, you can't steal people's lunches. That's not okay. But the janitor said so. And then the janitor is like, I don't know. I guess I must have. And walks away. Like, this is essentially what I got out of this. Right. Which is just annoys me to no end. Right. Yep, so, I'm, on, I'm I'm right there with you. Yep, so that's that's what I got out of that, and then basically... Uh, yeah, I've got two other notes. Go for it. Uh, Tarkin and Anakin share a handshake, and when they yep. do, it cuts to like just the beginning of like the Imperial March. Like There's a couple yeah. of... Um, it's not even like the full introduction to the Imperial March. Just like a small motif from it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a really nice touch. Nice touch indeed, yes. Yeah. Um, and then my last note is that Anakin and Obi-Wan uh, have a little discussion about Tarkin. Obi-Wan doesn't like Tarkin. Uh, Anakin obviously does. Um, their discussion is essentially like a recap of the fortune cookie of this episode. Mm-hmm. So for once, I really feel like this is the first time that the fortune cookie is kind of like a moral of the episode and it starts with Truly it and so. ends with yeah. it. Yes. So uh, with those bookends, like I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. At that point, uh, Tarkin gets on a bus uh, with a couple of guards and uh, takes off. I was saying cue loud music. That's the end of it. End of this one. Yep. Um, Another note about yeah. Tarkin is the voice actor who plays Tarkin. That is Stephen Stanton. Uh, he has done a lot of work on the Clone Wars. Uh, and the one thing that stuck out to me, uh, other than him playing Tarkin, was that he is Griff Holleron, uh, which is the the black ace pilot, black in ship color, not in skin color, uh, right. from Star Wars Resistance resistance 
So kudos to him. Very nice. That's all I got. What do you got? Yep. You got That's anything it. you want to discuss up, about this down. one? We no, can jump straight into that if you want. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, so I was split on the first two episodes of this three-parter, and uh, mm-hmm. this one's going to solidify it as uh, a thumbs down. Mm-hmm. Man, I really wanted to give this one a thumbs up. And I think I watched it, or I tried watching it, and I didn't make it all the way through the first time, and then I did. And you guys know how I do these things, is I watch them multiple times and whatever. This one, just this 22 minutes, felt like fucking forever. Yep, definitely. I think maybe if this three-parter was a two-parter and some of this felony baloney was cut out, um, we could have curtailed this thing down to like... 44 minutes as opposed to an hour and got some real good stuff out of it because some of the ideas in here are good. I'm not saying um, these are 100% lousy, but the, the it's for me, the journey is just too much. Yeah. And I'm right there with you. Honestly, this is a thumbs down for me. This is a, uh, I, I really also wanted to like this one. It, uh, I agree basically with everything you're saying. There are so many action scenes in this episode in particular that none of them stand out to me. There's nothing special here. There's also too much of like, like as soon as things start happening, we have to cut to something else. Yes. And we do that a lot in the Clone Wars. Like we often have like A plot, B plot, but mm-hmm. most of this is not A plot, B plot. Most of this is plot A with cutting away to other stuff. Right. And it's yeah, there's there's no focus on this episode, which is interesting. It's probably the most focused of all three because now we have like a a singular like get off planet sort of mission, right? See, I feel like I liked this one the least out of the three of them. I I liked them all equally, which is to say, not at all. You know, like like these aren't awful episodes per se, but they just. I think what I said in episode one regarding Sobek was I literally don't remember Sobek existing prior to getting back into our rewatch here. And I did, and, and I liked him. Now that he's gone, I, I I, can see why he didn't stick with me because these three episodes are just, they're just there. They don't add anything to the overall story. They aren't interesting stories in and of themselves. Even the fact that they introduced Tarkin, I don't remember that happening honestly Mm -hmm. from my first view through which is crazy because it's Tarkin but I I literally had no memory of him being on this show right um like that's really bad when I don't remember a major character like fucking Tarkin showing up on the fucking Clone Wars right yeah I was super excited to see Tarkin a couple weeks ago knowing that uh this was like a, a you know like a three a three-part thing and we were going to get to see like the first arc of Tarkin and uh, it's just there. It's yeah. yeah. Like I don't get the, I don't get any major sense of Tarkin. If any, like I said before, if anything, this kind of harmed Tarkin's characterization in my head. Right. More so than it helped. It just made him seem like a punk ass bitch. Honestly, throughout all three of these episodes. Okay. And I don't understand why he would be put in any position of power. Um, yeah. But understanding maybe how the Empire works later on, I can sort of see it. Uh, like, Rogue One helps me more, for sure, the way he takes advantage of... Oh, he's pretty wonderful in Rogue One. Right. He's great, you know. Um, But... Yeah, he takes advantage of the situation there, but here he's just, like, complaining the whole time. And then, in turn, we get Ahsoka complaining, so it's just, now I'm complaining. Yeah, they're kind of two two sides of the same coin, mm-hmm. you know. But, uh, I mean, obviously, different sides. That was, that was kind of a dumb statement on my part there, so. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, I... So, this episode on its own... Thumbs down, uninteresting to me. 
And then, and the, then the three part arc total it's thumbs down, total, obviously for you. Yeah, yeah, like it just. Yeah, like in retrospect, it just it like I was really hoping for a turnaround here at the end, you know, because I've gone thumbs down all three now, right? I I never gave that a single one thumbs up. That is correct. So yeah, like I was watching this one, I was like, all right, let's see how this one closes out. Hopefully, it'll be some fun stuff. And nope, honestly, it's not. It's not even fun. Yeah, like the, the action scenes at this point, there there's no variation. We are at the point now where like they really got to figure out these action scenes because they all just blend in now. You know. Yeah, I did tend to kind of zone out, and it was when I was supposed to be excited for what was going on that I was checking the time and you know looking to see how much how much time we had left to get through. Right. But um, that's not good. I'd imagine that somebody out there has a different opinion than us. Maybe. That's fine. Yeah. Where where would people be able to go to uh, share that opinion with us? Well, you can always uh, subscribe and like and comment on any of the various platforms we're on. Apple Podcasts, TuneIn, Stitcher, Google Play. Uh, audio also goes up on YouTube. Uh, you can always go old-fashioned and tweet at us at NotTheNerds uh, and Facebook at NotTheNerdsPodcast. Uh, Gmail, if you want to go that route, uh, not the nerds podcast at gmail.com. Nice. You know, uh, but otherwise, as always, we like to thank Lindsay at strange fancy music at gmail.com. She put together the jingle at the beginning and end of each episode that you hear. Uh, and we also like to give a nice shout out to Kevin, uh, Warren at they call me K dub on Twitter. He put together the artwork that you see our cover art. Um, but yeah, beyond that, I've been Lorenzo. I've been Kevin. These aren't the nerds you're looking for. Bye-bye.